Thank you, John, for having us. <laughs> You're welcome. What an incredible song by Amy Grant, uh, Woman Faithful. The time is exactly four minutes past 1 p.m. Uh, today on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. And you're with me, John, your faithful host. Um, this is a midday talk session for those who are tuning in right away. Uh, this is Agape's midday talk session, and we usually bring incredible people with incredible stories. We know that we all love a good story, and we love good stories with good people. And um, I'm not alone in studio. I have some incredible people, some phenomenal people. We have uh, seated exactly opposite of me is uh, Barbara Ick. Um, Barbara, you want to give a yes. shout out to our listeners? Hi, everybody, and thank you for listening. I hope you are. <laughs> oh, and to my right is uh, Carol Fensham. Hi, Carol. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in, and thank you, John, for having us. Awesome. And today we're going to be talking about um, the company African Gardens. You know, for many of us, we like to admire the beauty of nature, and we walk out there in those gardens, and we just want to, like, take a moment. There is a lot of peace, the serenity, the beauty. Uh, but there's a lot of hard work that goes to make those gardens like look <laughs> yes. So today we're going to find out about what they do. Uh, before we go there, I would like to read the bio. So uh, Carol, Carol's love for nature and gardening was something that enthralled her from, uh, sorry, daily from an early age. She remembers playing in the garden as a young child, vigorously climbing trees and excitedly exploring her natural surroundings. Instinctively, she was surrounding herself with the pure beauty of Mother Nature. Carol's grand played a huge role in her love for gardening. Some of her happiest memories are of her being barefoot outdoors in the sun, happily listening to her chatter, her chatter about the various plants, fruit, and vegetables growing in the garden. Needless to say, with them growing up in Durban, they had many chili trees growing and Carol was the chief picker and eater. When she chose to study for a future career, Carol chose the hospitality industry as cooking was something she had always been passionate about. But as life would have it, she became a stay-at-home mom instead and then worked part-time to supplement her family's income. She chose to become a landscaper four years ago as a career as a career, as she is passionate about gardening and firmly believes that an individual's outside area definitely affects their inner well-being and state of mind. It has, been a, it has been a long road to date and Carol is extremely happy and privileged to now be mentored and working alongside Barbara, who has been in the profession for 15 years. 15 years. Obviously, with COVID, with COVID hitting them so suddenly and with the ongoing uh, drought situation, Carol now finds herself in a position of not being able to find enough work to sustain herself. So she has now added garden servicing to her business. But once again, more work is needed to make this sustainable. And Barbara is also uh, an incredible, uh, fantastic um uh, uh, person, we just uh, had an encounter, uh, a chat uh, behind the scenes, and would like to hear. So I'll start with you, Barbara. Yes. Uh, how did you get into this industry? You have a beautiful story, and I want you to tell you as it is. Thank you. Well, it was a um, one of those God-given moments, shall we call it? Mm -hmm. My um, our church started a school way back, um, probably. 20, 25 years ago. Mm. Um, and when my daughter got into uh, junior uh, high school, yeah. 
I sent her there because just in support of the church. Mm. And we built a new church. And uh, I'm trying to think of how many years ago that was. She's 30, going to high school, can't mm. quite work it out. You know? okay. But anyway, uh, what happened was as I took her to school one day, the minister said to me, we're opening on Sunday. Of course, all hands on deck trying to get the church ready for mm. the Sunday. Yeah. And he said the landscaper had let him down. Oh. So I said, leave it with me. And I did a little drive around. And by five o'clock that afternoon, there was a garden. It wow. was a very simple sort of formal little garden with a water feature in the middle and across, a, a, shall we call it, a four squares. Yeah. And um, But it was the start. And since then... It's just escalated, and all things that the Lord gives us never returns empty, and mm. it has fed me and my family and sent my daughter through university and, you know, been very good to me. And I may just add that my mentor, who was Johan Hosten from uh, Johannesburg, mm. once said, you can't um, copy God's work, mm. but if you imitate, mm. try to imitate him, you'll never go wrong in your landscaping. Awesome. So I follow mm. nature a lot. You'll find my gardens are natural more wow. than I do the formal garden where necessary, but mm -hmm. natural gardens are my favorite thing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And uh, Carol, uh, how did you um, find yourself in this industry? Well, mine's quite an unusual story. <laughs> it, it, it happened in a strange way. I was actually moving a friend's father into a frail care home. Okay. Um, a very good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And her father, Robert, said to me, Carol, would you please create me a garden outside my little home? Um, as I need a lovely place to be able to sit and relax. So I said to him, absolute pleasure, Robert. Mm -hmm. So that's how I began. It was a small garden and... Um, that was four years ago. Today, he's still one of my clients. Awesome. I was actually there two days ago. I'm going back next week. And then from there, um, another client said to me, because I planted succulent bulbs, I used to sell them at markets. Mm. And he said, you do such beautiful succulent bulbs. Would you do my pots in my garden? So I did that. And from there, one of his friends came over and saw my pots and said, wow, well, would you please come and landscape in my garden? And so I did. And so God has been good to me too. Mm. And that is how I've gone from one job to another. Wow. But I'm nowhere near in the league of Barbara yet. So I'm <laughs> so very blessed well, you're to near have her mentoring me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so you've very got, blessed. You've got some good years ahead, which is super. <laughs> Thank and you, I Barbara. Help you, help you mm. in any way I can. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to being able to be mentored and learning from Barbara. Mm. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. I'm very blessed. Mm. Well, I think that what we get is given to share. So, mm. you know, someone once said to me, mm. aren't you scared someone steals your ideas? Mm. And I said, well, I better not be because that's quite dangerous. If I if mm. they steal my idea mm. and I've only got one, I'm in mm. trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so they can steal my ideas because I've got more. You know? So it's there are many true. more to, it's to, so true. to have. So. And you become creative when you're landscaping. So you're always thinking of new yes. and innovative and ways to do things. So. Just, we, we feed off each other. We, mm. we inspire each other. Yes. And that's what I find mm. so exciting about being with other creative people. Mm. Like Absolutely. Steel shop and steel. <laughs> we, we were just having coffee. We couldn't help ourselves. We were looking at um, everything around. And just, Look at that. That's beautiful. Let's take a photo of that. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, we love that. Ideas <laughs> all around. That can work in a job. <laughs> yes. And I want to find out what thrills you most about plants and nature. Wow, oh, Carol, you go there's so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, that I natural think. beauty, and I'm a true believer in that if your outside area mm. is beautiful, it's going to give you inner peace. Mm. After a hard day's mm. work, you need a beautiful area to go and sit oh, and sure. relax mm. and to create something from nothing, to mm. change it and mm. to see what you've done. Mm. It's just amazing also, when you finish a job. It's just mm. amazing. Don't you find yeah. that... Is you know some of those where there really is nothing and there's almost no budget, mm. are some of the best ones mm. where yes. you've been given this and you can make that. that sure. Yeah, you know, and that's a wonderful challenge because you then really look around you and see what you can use. Yes. You know, you can Start find using an old nature. thing there and old thing there, nice looking rock that other people mm. overlook. Mm. And when you at the end of it, it turns into quite a lovely something out of nothing. You know. 
absolutely. Uh, and, and, you know, like, um, we all love uh, the scenery. I mean, I think it's built in us to yes. appreciate beauty. Yes. You know, whenever you see the beautiful colors of the flowers, the green, you know, just perfectly, uh, you know, mold, blown. Oh, he just feel like, oh, my word. So I just want to, um, you know, come to this. If you can describe what a landscaping is, you know, because we have people that view us and maybe want to venture into this, but they do not know what they're getting themselves into. So what is landscaping or gardening? I would say that it's, it involves several elements. You, you start out with, and it's almost like organizing a thing, mm. because too much distracts your mind. That's mm. why it's like um, packing your cupboard straight, okay. you know. Put, I would say, mm. put similar plants with similar plants. Okay. If there are too many spiky plants and frilly plants mm. and broad-leafed and fine-leafed, all mixed up. Mm. You can't really appreciate them. Mm. But when they're planted in groups, mm -hmm. it looks like oh. a, a neatly arranged garden. And mm. that just brings things into order. Mm. And I think that's where it sort of starts. I find when I go into, I don't really like makeovers of gardens. Mm -hmm. I love a clean palette. Mm -hmm. I think we all do. Mm -hmm. But every now and then you get one where it's, just overgrown and it's mm -hmm. a jungle and yes. you have to start again mm. and so often it's you don't have the option of pulling everything out mm. but I find that finding similars and arranging them all by plant species mm -hmm. you get a, a uniform a, a sort of more coordinated look and mm. that that helps you know mm -hmm. it's almost and also when it comes to plants mm -hmm. it's a little bit like music because you have plants that are accent plants mm -hmm. and those are the loud ones yes. the loud spices yes. like the, the aloes and the um the flaxes mm -hmm. and those sort of very yeah. bold plants and then yes. you have the fine ones which are the soft notes mm -hmm. yes you know so you've got your crescendos in the <laughs> loud, in the in the the, the spiky plants and your soft notes, then you've got the greys, which is that sort of legato mm. going through, and with your blues, you, then you've got so. your repetition, which is your rhythm. Mm. So you will have it's music in nature, you know, <laughs> music in nature. And I think it's it's really coordinated in a beautiful way that we don't yet understand, but one day we'll. <laughs> wow. wow, absolutely. Yeah, I, so abso I personally abso I love you know plants. They look fantastic. Um, Aside from the those, and we need them because they're uh, taking in the carbon dioxide and giving yes, us oxygen, so yes, they're not vital. Yes. But just to add to Barbara yep. and what landscaping is all about, so there are many elements to use. Mm. I mean, we use rocks, mm. we use lots of features, mm. and it's wonderful when you can um, upcycle materials and use them in your gardens. Mm. Um, and sometimes a little is better than too much. Mm. And it very much depends on the client's needs, wants, and time. And their tastes. And their tastes, yes. very much so. Yes. So I'm finding a lot of Joburg clients want to try and copy their Joburg gardens here. Yeah. Mm. And I'm mm. saying to them, it can't work. I'm sorry, <laughs> this is not Joburg. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Just we can't do it. <laughs> You've actually answered the next question I was about to ask. You know, like how do you approach, you know, um, you know a project? You know, uh, say, what do you uh, put into consideration whenever you... Now, somebody, you've got this client, uh, they've got this sort of, um, you know, yard. Mm. And they say, well, I just want my yard to be really beautiful. Those are the best clients to deal with. It's <laughs> when a client um, sort of knows what they want and you know it can't happen. That, then it becomes, your diplomacy comes in. You okay. try and convince them mm. and suggest. This is what I suggest because I know this is what you'd love, but it's mm. not really going to work. And I don't want you to spend money on plants that are not that are going to fail. Um, but now with Barbara behind me, two is better than one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I find a lot of it is just problem solving. A lot mm. of it is there's a slope. What do we do now? You know, do we yes. do create a terrace? Do we just do a slope? Um, mm. There's so many ways you have to you have to look at the terrain, yes. what you got given, and then sort of plan according to that. There's such things as slopes and um, drainage systems. You mm. consider these mm -hmm. things. Um, where do you want your shade? What you plant in the shade? What yes. you don't plant in the shade? Yes. Where you want? Have you got animals? Have you got children? Yes. Where is your kitchen? You want don't want your herb garden over there. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, and it's your true. kitchen's here. Yeah. So it's a case of 
your outside must be such a part of your inside. So I always believe that your living area, in the old days, your swimming pool used to be at the bottom of the yard. Mm. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to carry a tray of cool drinks down <laughs> the over a bridge. I want to walk out of the kitchen right to the pool. Mm. Let's eat, folks, you know. Mm. So these days, I think the trends are so different. Houses are different. Kitchens used to be in the back. Now they're in the front. Mm. And um, it's really exciting. Yeah. That you can, you've even got outside kitchens. You develop an entire kitchen garden. Food kitchens complete. are becoming a yes. big thing. With mm. stone, so they love mm. to everything out there. Your herbs right here on the yeah. wall. Yeah. You're grabbing fresh herbs, <laughs> parsley in the pot. It's just so exciting. You know, there are wonderful things yeah. you can do. Now. And then Barbara and I both agree we prefer to work with indigenous plants, mm. especially mm. in the mm. Eastern mm. Cape mm. Yes, with really the water are. shortage. Mm. So we, we really do prefer to work with the indigenous because we know it works mm. with the wind factor and the water shortages. So you can still have a beautiful space, even with that. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. And I just want to, you know, from a professional point of view, um, if you were to list some of the services that you guys offer in terms of, okay, I can do A, B, C, D, what are some of the things that you offer um, in terms of gardening, from well, a gardening perspective? I will say from my point of view, I do I do a consult and mm. I will do a garden layout okay. with a specified list of plants and everything else they're going to need, landscaping, hardscaping, services, I will list all that. And I specialize in design and installation. Carol comes in on more on the maintenance side. Mm. I, I don't like to do maintenance. Mm. No, look, I also don't, but towns are tough, so mm. one's left with no choice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I will do consults afterwards. I don't mind telling them what might be wrong with mm. the plant or so on. Yeah. But I'm also not, I have to tell you, my strengths are not there. Mm. I'm not a horticulturist. Mm. I'm not a grower of plants. As mm -hmm. I said to Carol, I'm persistent. Mm. I plant enough to make sure that some survive. Okay. You know, <laughs> I will put in the right part. I think she's talking absolute nonsense. I think she has got green fingers because she's been doing this for 15 years. I think she's just been very <laughs> humble I've now. Found I think God has gifted her with green fingers. I've, I've found some very good growers. Mm. So I know where to go for yes, the right plants yes. that mm. really survive. Yes. So you learn these things after many years. And um, Carol, on the other hand, would be the kind of person who would not only get your garden there, but then also perhaps look in on you from time to yes. time mm. to make I sure do that, that it's with all going a few well. of my clients. Because I also live out of town. So popping in just to say hi is not so practical for me. Oh. But we also work out of town. Mm. So we don't mind going f uh, further afield, places like George, Plett, Wilderness, Port Alfred, I do Kirkwood, uh, Potency. Um, so that's our growth plan. We yes, are going we to start would like branching to out. go mm. a little bit further afield mm. and mm. then we would stay there for the duration of the project and mm. then come back afterwards, you know. So that's I currently do that with some of my Kirkwood clients and I'd be more than willing the team would go to where we needed to travel. And Barbara mm. has done some amazing work. I mean, she's done Royalston. Mm. Um, name some of the jobs you've done because you've done many did beautiful Sardinia projects. Bay Golf Estate, mm. and wow. uh, I did the the gatehouse for Sardinia Bay Golf Estate with his steel horse, mm. um, which I call him Archangel. But <laughs> I have a, a, a sculptor. His name is Melvin Mabaka. Okay. He's very talented. Mm. I found him. He did those beautiful uh, paper and wire. Uh, kudu heads that okay. one would make lights out of. They're sure. quite magnificent. But yeah, I enlisted him to do the horse at Sardinia Bay Golf Estate. So I drew it and he made it with a well that we worked together. It was a collaboration. And mm. then I did Rolston Gatehouse as well, where we did two sable, um, which are standing outside the gatehouse. Yes, I think watch, I've seen them. What's beautiful. Yes. The gates, as beautiful. I yes. And so I work with Melvin a lot. We're currently busy with a project where mm. we're doing a very beautiful sculpture for a pack house in a citrus packaging plant in Kirkwood. And um, that's going to be a surprise. I can't say any more about that. <laughs> but I work with him a lot. And mm. um, I've done... Uh, Private homes, I did uh, Madison Park Estates, Gatehouse, I've done, within Sardinia Bay, I've done 13 uh, private homes, and 
Kate Ralston about five or six. Mm. Do you see how amazing she is? Yeah, I um, see. And then oh, so we'll blessed. 15 years, eh? Yeah. <laughs> it's a long this, time. And, yeah. and I have to say that it's been very rewarding, both from a, a personal point of view, because I can be feeling rotten and mm. I'll be in a gardener and mm. within two ticks, people mm. say, oh, mm. well, you're feeling sick. No, I'm yeah. not sick anymore. Yeah. It's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> you're creating with nature. Mm. Mm. It's, it's just, it's mm. just the most amazing mm. feeling. Oh, my word. And, and I know that, you know, beauty, effect. especially the beauty of nature, has a therapeutic effect. Absolutely. You, you know, cannot uh, be in a bad mood when you're working in a garden. Most decidedly, oh. I, I would, <laughs> there are two things I would recommend for the human being, and mm. one is laughter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I believe it heals you. Yes. Um, even when I had COVID and mm. I have a good laugh, it, it would like loosen up all the gunk, mm. you know, it was good. <laughs> you know, have a good laugh, it's very yes. good for you. And then, of course, just being outside in the sun. Yes, time. absolutely. And soaking up the beauty of, of the creation is... Wow. And then that glass of wine after work is yeah. <laughs> something to look forward to after a hard Being day. Yeah. Yeah. Keeps, yeah. Me, keeps me sane, not always sober, but sobriety is a good thing. <laughs> I, I want to find out, uh, Barbara, you said this statement that there's no improving on nature. Mm. What exactly do you mean by that? I mean that the creation is so perfect. And if you just look at a butterfly's wings mm. or a peacock's feather, there's yeah. that much gold paint oh. per section yes and looking up close doesn't make sense stand back and it's the most exquisite thing you've seen um so when i follow nature i look at how rocks fall in the mm. fell mm. and when i arrange rocks in a garden one has to be careful there's mm. i call it the science of rocks my, mm. my men who work with me think i'm dark <laughs> when I say no, they do. you're not showing the rock's face. <laughs> it has a face, I say. I say yes. And it's on its it's on its back, it's not on its belly. Mm. You know? <laughs> okay. And then I always say it's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. If there's a curve there, you find another curve and you fit them together. Wow. And once you do that, then there's a coordinated arrangement mm. of rocks. Otherwise, it's very inky pinky ponky, like mm. those little pointed bricks yes. that people put around Edges. Their, yes. their, their gardens. Some people like it. Personally, it's not my thing. Mm. So if if you have a garden with inky pinky ponky, call me. I'll come to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and the joy is also going to the quarries and hand picking those rocks oh, because yes. of yes. the colours. Oh my goodness! And uh, I just wanted to to find out from you, uh, Carol. Um, okay, for our listeners, you know, um, out there, what should they consider? You know, for example. Um, is, are there courses uh, that they can take? Say, say, you know, I know some of these things can come as a natural gift. You've just got, mm -hmm. you know, um, a knack for it. You mm -hmm. can just uh, determine what looks good. But mm -hmm. some people probably would feel like, I think I need a particular course. There are a lot of courses mm -hmm. on the internet that they can do. Um, okay. Ellison offers free courses where you complete your course and then you pay on completion for your certificate. Um, they can just Google Mm. They can also just use Google to research, do research. Um, but there are lots of forums where you can study um, that are very reasonably priced. They've just got to use Google and look mm. for free courses um, or cheap courses to give them some background into I think that a lot of people just need some guidance because mm. they, they sort of have an idea. Mm -hmm. And I think when I started, I, it, it took me, I, I did a few courses through the Lifestyle Garden Centre in okay. Joburg. Johan Hosten was my mentor. All right. And it was like this rearrangement again where mm -hmm. they just teach you the refined, yes. what the raw stuff that you yes. have, you know, all this yes. um, sort of not uncoordinated ideas yes. about gardening. Yes. Mm -hmm. And once you get that, it, it certainly helps. Um, well, Carol and I would be perfectly happy to give. I, I do short courses on, I've done some Zoom, mm. Zoom gardening, where I do a, a little box this big. Okay. And All I right. teach the principles of design wow. in a box. Wow. Where I use little tiny rocks. Little, tiny <laughs> little plants, Zen garden. <laughs> little tiny. He is a Zen garden. Yes. Yeah. Even, uh, I'll, I'll show you some pictures. Here's it's one. So Sorry oh, to interrupt you, but it's so funny you mention it because it was something I was going to speak to you about. Mm. So I, I yes. do a small, 
short courses on it can just be it sometimes I, i've done talks at churches we have uh, some of the ladies groups and other just the floral society we have done some talks on the principles of gardening where we just discuss the arrangement of leaf color texture mm -hmm. um, and all the other elements that you bring into a garden mm. so i'm happy to assist i've always said advice is free you know um, i don't mind giving advice it would be nice to be paid for it sometimes but, um, there's some things that are just meant to be passed on but mm. i'm quite happy to assist if anyone wants to know mm. um, but between carol and i i'm sure we can offer some short courses mm -hmm. and for also sure. i find that uh, in town Sherwood garden center is one of the the girls they know so much mm. about plants mm. and um, they're very willing to help assist, you know. Mm. And a lot of people just lack confidence in their ability. They, mm. they're fearful yeah, because mm. they've never done it before. Mm. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening to this right now, this is a midday talk session. We bring incredible people uh, on air with us every single day. If you want some inspiration, if you want some really good conversation uh, to listen to, you have to tune in to Agape FM. So, uh, Barbara, I just want to ask uh, this uh, question. Uh, we are avid Bible readers. Yes. <laughs> and... I want to ask, what do you think of the Garden of Eden? Well, I'm hoping to see it <laughs> Not hoping. I not know I'll see it. Yes. Not too soon. <laughs> not, no, not yet. But look, I'm ready to go. I'm uh, ready to go and I'm ready to see it. And uh, I know it's going to be so much more than mm, I've read about. Sure. And because he has assured us in his word that no eye has seen, no mind has conceived of what he has, he has is in store for us. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about that. The Garden of Eden is going to be the, the, the thing. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for <Right>. sure. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Um, uh, thank you so much for coming, um, you know, uh, to Agape. And we're really excited. Um, just for our listeners, how can they contact you? If somebody wants their yard done, or if somebody has some incredible project that they want to partner with you, how can they reach out to you? I think they must reach out to Carol because we're running under her banner, which is African Gardens. Okay. So I leave that to Carol. So they will find me on Facebook. They can um, inbox me. But they can also call me on 061-216-9743. Or they can email me at carolfensham at gmail.com. Awesome. Ladies and gents, you've heard it. Uh, please get in touch with African Gardens. If you have a lawn that you feel you've got some amazing ideas that you'd like, you know, some... Um, you know, gardening to be done or uh, you'd like uh, to do landscaping on it and beautify the environment, uh, you definitely need need to call them. You know who to call. Uh, we bring amazing people and these are people that have years of experience that will actually turn your yard into the Garden of Good Eden. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's been amazing to have you. It's been um, a lovely day. What uh, we usually we do this as a tradition now mm -hmm. before we end. Mm -hmm. uh, we leave our listeners with a word of encouragement. Okay. Yeah. Um, what can I say to them? I can say to them, well, just approach everything with confidence. And I have prayed trees into the ground. Wow. And I can tell you, one of them took seven months to bud. But I've prayed it into the ground and I've said, Lord, I marked north on it when I took it out of the ground. It's still facing north. Please make it grow. And that would be my advice for anyone transplanting a tree. Carol, what's yours? Mine would be, don't be discouraged. Mm. If your plant dies, don't give up. Mm. Try again, because mm. it happens. Mm. And it depends on the weather. Learn from your mistakes and just keep on going and try. And yeah. feel free to give us a shot if you yes. need some advice. For sure. Absolutely. And I, I like it, you know, just parting words. I love, you know, that the Bible uses a lot of language that is from, you know, uh, plants. Yes. You know, your seed 
you know, as a mustard, your faith as a mustard seed. Uh, you know, Jesus uses the language that we really can see and understand. Mm -hmm. So this is very familiar to uh, people who read the scriptures and they understand, you know, the principles of, you know, gardening. You can see it from the Garden of Eden. From the hand of God. Yes, everything has just been made by God. It's yes. beautiful. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank you, ladies. For just to through. end, I have to say this. John mm. and the radio station. Yes. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for picking up us on Facebook and inviting us in for this interview. You're thank you. You're we doing an you well amazing and job. Blessings on your your project. Awesome. Yes. Thank May you your radio so station go from strength to strength. Amen. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much for receiving your blessings. Well. Thank you, John. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's that time again. We have to round up. Uh, we're going to listen to the same song. I love it uh, by uh, Amy Grant, a woman faithful. <laughs> 